This is our basic SR latch. Now, although the terms latch and flip-flop are sometimes used interchangeably, there actually is a distinction. Latch is used to denote an asynchronous circuit. That means that the signals could change at any time and the circuit responds accordingly. However, we often want our computer to behave in a synchronous manner. For example, we mentioned before that an SR latch is essentially a one-bit memory, and so if we have several bits in, for example, a register, and we put a new multi-bit number into that register, we would want all those bits to update at the same time, not at different times. This can be fixed by using a clock, and the result is known specifically as an SR flip-flop. And flip-flop means that the circuit is synchronous. Now we can make this more explicit by saying it is a clocked SR flip-flop. And the way we turn this SR latch into a clocked SR flip-flop is by adding a clock signal that passes through some AND gates, which I will hook to the circuit here and here. So what this clock represents is an input line that is zero except for at periodic intervals. At periodic intervals, the signal will go from 0 to 1, and the clock assures that that happens regularly. And because different circuits in the system are using the same clock, they will all receive that signal of 1 from the clock at the same time. So we still have our set and reset signals coming in, but now neither of those signals can get past these AND gates except for when the clock sends its signal of 1. Otherwise, the circuit behaves the same as before. However, recall that before there was a problem occurring when both S and R were 1 at the same time. This is still a problem in this synchronous circuit, and we can fix that by modifying this further into a D flip-flop. Now, this D can have different meanings. Uh, it can be interpreted as meaning data, or it can be interpreted as meaning delay. Now the D flip-flop solves the double one problem of the SR latch and flip-flop by only having a single input. And that single input is D. But that input is split off on two lines by a NOT gate so that one of these lines always gets the negation of D and the other simply gets D as its input. Now the characteristic table for the D flip-flop is quite simple. If D is 0, then a 0 will come along this line, a 1 will come out of this NOT gate. Because a 0 is entering here, it will not get past the AND gate even when the clock fires. The 1 going through here will get past the AND gate when the clock fires. That 1 will enter this NOR gate, 
1 and anything is 1, negated is 0, therefore q at the next time step will be a 0 when the input is a 0. However, if the input were a 1, then the negated 1 would be a 0 here. It would not get through the AND gate. It would get through this AND gate when the clock fires. We would have 1 or anything is 1. Negated is 0. A 0 comes out for the negation. That 0 then goes along this line, combines with the 0 already coming out of here. 0 or 0 is 0. Negated is 1. In both cases, the output at time t plus 1 is the same as d. Likewise, the negation will be consistent. Now, having only one input does remove the problem of having a pro the double one issue, but there's another way of fixing this problem, and it can be done using what's called a JK flip-flop. A JK flip-flop takes the basic SR flip-flop, but instead of reducing the inputs to a single one, it does the following. We remove that D input, and in the JK flip-flop, we take these outputs and loop them back into this AND gate and this AND gate. So now we have a circuit that takes two inputs, J and K, and these correspond to the set and reset of the SR flip-flop. Now the characteristic table of this circuit is very similar to the SR flip-flop. If we have inputs of zero, then the output at the next time step will be the same as it was on the previous time step. You can confirm that on your own. If we have k as one, recall that k is the reset, and so we will get a value of zero. If j is one, j is the set, and so we'll get a value of 1. But if they are both 1, we will no longer have a problematic situation. This behavior will be allowed, because if both 1 is coming into each of these lines, and let's do both examples. If q were 0, and 1 is coming into each of these, then that zero will go along here into this AND gate, and even when the clock fires, we'll have zero and one and one, which is a zero coming out. However, here, because one is the negation of zero, we'll, we will have had a one. That one will come through here. The input here will be one. The clock will fire. We'll have one and one and one, which is one. We'll have one or the zero coming in here, that's one negated is zero, therefore the output here will be zero, which is the opposite of, of what it was before. That zero goes in here, we'll have zero or zero is zero, negated is one, this is also the opposite of what it was before. So we're going from a situation where the state was zero and a one for the negation, and those toggle to have a state of one and zero for the negation. If, however, q had initially been one, 
you can follow the same reasoning to get the outputs which will once again toggle. In general, the output at the next time step will be the opposite of whatever it was at the previous time step. 